Hey everyone, welcome back to Fort Malthus, episode 5. If you're just tuning in, we are playing on a uh, Untamed Wilds with just a couple of conditions I put on myself. Instead of building a giant fortress like last time, what I am going to do is build... This is going to be one covered area so that we have access to water and fishing. And then this will be our area that we can use to gather above ground plants. Then I'm going to hollow out a giant area to grow below ground plants. And we're mainly going to subsist on below ground stuff. It's going to be a little bit different than last time, obviously, because last time we relied heavily on mainly, um, mainly foraging and just the tons of food that we got from, uh, those, all those giant animals that we seem to be missing this time. Oh, sorry. I forgot. I think I moved. It's been a few days since I've played. Um, I moved all those guys up here. So, we got our little area over here set off. And we're using that as a pasture, and we're using that as a gathering area for all of these uh, hazelnut trees that drop fruit. Let's see, it is midwinter, which means we don't really have any caravans or migrants coming up, probably. Uh, but we do want to get ready for the eventual elven caravan that should come in spring. Um, aside from that, we're just going to kind of chill and do what we have. We're doing pretty good when it comes to food, obviously. Doing good on food, doing good on drinks, got lots of seeds, which I believe are mainly going to be things like plump helmets, some fish, and a bunch of other. So, actually, I think, why don't we... Is that an eel? What is that? Ugh. Land prey. Not the prettiest fish. I think I'm gonna start working on that giant area that we can use for, like, underground foraging. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm basically just gonna offset it. Um, sadly, I think we'll only be able to do one deep. And that's just because of how our fortress is currently working. Uh, I don't want to... Obviously, if I burrow into this... Like, if I if I try to channel down... Uh, a, that'll create above-ground soil. Because any once soil has been touched one time by sunlight, it becomes above-ground soil. So, if you want sub subterranean things to grow on it, you've got to keep it like this. Uh, where it, sun never touches it. These guys should make short work of it. Uh, I will have to finagle it a little bit because there's going to be wet soil here in the middle under these ponds, and so they won't dig around it, and I'll pretty much just have to force them. Uh, I hope you guys are liking the series so far. My friend Andrew has been helping me figure out and tone in the audio levels, and uh, his suggestion was that I take what we currently have um, and tone down the background music volume by about 10%. So we're at 40% background volume right now. Uh, I'm going to drop it down to 30 and see what it's like. Uh, he said sometimes I was getting drowned out. Um, he did say that it's a very good, it's a very good video series to relax to. So there's that. Um, I guess that's great. Uh, he wants me to do more challenges, like, you know, crazy things. And I had to explain to him that you can't do, you know, a two-person dwarf fortress. It would be incredibly boring. Uh, but I do think what I'm going to do after this fortress falls for Season 3 is I think I'm going to do an Arctic fortress, which would be we dig into a glacier and only have subterranean soil to work with. Oh, 
obviously that's going to cause some issues with biodiversity, but we can get some like yetis or something. <coughs> and we'd basically have to very carefully use the underground to get um, animals. Also, we probably wouldn't have that much trade, but probably also wouldn't last that long. Because I don't know if any of you have ever tried to start on a glacier, it's very hard. You guys are making short work of this. What I might do later on is clear out one layer below this with channeling and then maybe figure out some sort of pumping system to get water into here and that way we can have muddied soil and that'll be It'll let me have some spore trees pop up, but it'll also let me have slightly better uh, crop growth. So upcoming things, um, so it's February, uh, and I am a gardener, so some things that are going to be upcoming on the channel, I'm going to do a big seed starting thing whenever uh, I uh, get to my growing zone, uh, which any of you who garden, um, you'll know that, so I'm in, I'm in zone 6A in Kansas City, so I can't really start things until late February, early March, um, so that, you know, I start my seeds inside in a little greenhouse, and then I'll move them outside. Uh, the main problem with that is, like, if I start them too early, they'll die, or they'll get leggy, which which is where they uh, grow too fast and become very weak and fall over. So, but I want to do, basically, I want to record all of my adventures in um, all of my adventures in uh, seed planting you know that way you know it's it's one of my passions and it's something that I like to teach so if you guys would be interested stick around for that uh, it's definitely gonna be going on and I'm sure I'll you know once once it warms up I'll do a tour of my garden uh, my fruit trees and my my backyard beds and everything and that'll just kind of be an ongoing thing all summer and then as it starts to get down into fall we will have to uh, do some, some cleanup and processing I'll show you guys how to do some canning and just kind of do you know some more hobbyist type stuff on the channel so uh, it's not gonna just be video games but for right now since it's winter I can't really do much else uh, another thing is I just ordered a 3D printer. Uh, I want to make my own Warhammer miniatures and then paint them. Because I was looking, since I don't want to play tabletop, I just want to have the figures to collect. It's not really, I don't know, a, a good, like, looking at it economically, it's not great to buy them from Games Workshop because they overcharge so much. You know, for the price of one uh, one large set of miniatures which is like 170 bucks for like 20 miniatures maybe uh, I'm getting a 3D printer and then for the set like for 20 extra bucks I'm getting the resin which will make a lot it's like a, it's like a kilogram of resin which will make like 35 miniatures or something so if you're into Warhammer that's going to be on the channel more. Um, Dark Tide didn't seem to do that well, probably just because it's not exactly popular at the moment. I might, I might just replay uh, Space Marine because that game's so good. 
but if you guys have any suggestions, um, I pretty much own every... I own a shitload of games. Uh, probably too many. I can do... Uh, I love settlement building games like this, RimWorld, um, Banished, stuff like that. Uh, I also own a ton of sci-fi games, you know, Surviving Mars, stuff like that. Kind of bridges that... Um, kind of bridges that gap between sci-fi and uh, city builder. It's a good game. It's, it's slow paced and relaxed like this game with some, some weird moments in there. Uh, aside from that, I'm up to pretty much anything. You know, if you guys have a game that you can't find a playthrough of online, um, we might do it. You know, you just, just let me know. Uh, one game that I might look into is Encased. It's a dystopian future game where you, you basically play a technician or criminal or executive and you get dropped into this dome and it's like a one-way ticket. And the dome is like basically its own little world because you can't leave once you go in. And it's a sci-fi-ish. It's like near, near tech, near future sci-fi. My only problem is so, A, I was unable to find, like, anyone playing it. And I believe it's because of glitches. Like, save glitches, issues like that. But I would totally be willing to give it a try. You know, even if we couldn't finish it, it would be fun to just, you know, give it a go. Because it looks fun. Um, aside from that, take any suggestions. You know, if you guys want to see certain things gardening-wise, or if you want to look into certain things when it comes to printing, I'll, I'll take the time to learn and try to teach you guys what I can. Um, other than that, we are just smoothing our little ground over here. It's going real slow, but it is necessary. I'd like to have a temple. Do I have a temple? Did I make one? I made one. It's right here. They don't need a better one right now. Everyone's at least in an okay mood. Sorry for the rambling. I was just trying to get some thoughts out. Uh, because I want to make sure you guys understand that this channel is still evolving. And I don't really know what I want to do with it yet. I just know that it's going to have some gardening. It's going to have some, uh, you know, like, pres preservation stuff for, like, jarring and canning. Drying. Stuff like that. Uh, I think I'm going to try growing mushrooms this year, so that'll be a thing. Be, I always try to grow at least one new thing every season. Last year it was um, dent corn to make corn flour, and it worked out really well. So I got my own blue corn, and I grew it. Grew to like seven and a half, eight feet tall. I ended up getting a gallon freezer bag full of corn flour, and it was a lot of fun used it to make corn cake and cornbread and stuff like that. So, still have some. It looks... <laughs> when you don't use it to make tortillas or tortilla chips, it turns out like a little green, especially when you mix it with... So I made corn cake out of it, which is uh, half flour, half cor uh, cornmeal. Uh, or, well, it's corn flour, because it's really fine. And then I put... I, I made that, put a little sugar in it, so it was like a sweet cornbread. And I used, on top of that, was like canned pie filling. And it was like, uh, kind of like an apple turnover type thing. Where it was like, just gooey and caramely and it was really good. So, we do stuff like that. I love to bake. Um, really, it's just, I need an outlet for my creativity and this is how I'm doing it. Speaking of creativity outlets... My friend Andrew, the one that's helping me with the sound, is also going to help me with some art for my channel. So that I'm not just, you know, paint art anymore. Sounds like I have intruders. Yeah. My wife came down with the, with the baby. Our son is not feeling good. He's three. Got about six minutes in the episode left. I 
I guess he didn't want to go to bed right now. He took a nap earlier. He's got a little bit of a fever. He's also a booger butt, as all the other parents would understand. Let's see. So, let's try to find our caves, shall we? So what we're going to do is we're going to go safely away from our main area. I'm going to need to turn some of my guys off of stone cutting. Okay, there we go. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a little barrier. As soon as he breaks into the cavern layer, we are going to immediately immediately cover it back up because we are not equipped to handle the monsters down there but we do need the fauna or the flora sorry to start spawning and the way you do that is by getting um, the way you do that is by breaking in to the cavern layer it's the same way that you find out where lava is if you watched last season you know that how that works out it's relatively easy to find the lava layer, it's just not as easy to not kill your dwarves while you're doing it. I'm trying to do better at not recording these like 3 in the morning. Andrew says that if I do that I'll have to have an all Australian audience and just use blue references. I don't know how I can do I don't know if I can do that, man. I'm having a lot of luck here. We'll go down to elevation zero. Could be that we just started out pretty high up. We're also getting some econ uh, non, -econo non economic stone that we can use for projects, so there's that. Sounds like my son's gonna get a corn dog. Everyone loves corn dogs. Well, dang. I guess we're gonna have to keep digging. Screw it. We're going down. I mean, we we might be. We could always just get lucky and end up hitting the magma layer. I mean, I hope that doesn't happen, because that would kind of suck long term, but we, we do we do just kind of want the cavern. This is probably the deepest I've ever dug without finding anything. Uh, just for safe keeping, because we're doing so well, I'm going to move over a little bit. Mainly because we should be hitting some sort of cavern down here. Um, but we also... We also should be close to the... Close to the... Lava. Go ahead and do that. This way, we can easily block it off. Now, if they sense warm... So, just like the water earlier, uh, whenever they sense damp soil they stop digging, they also do the same for warm soil. Um, or in this case, stone, which would be stone that's next to lava. Could be one to two away. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell until it's too late. Okay, we're still digging. Screw it. All the way down. I'm 
really surprised. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I'm really surprised. We must have been super high up geographically. to negative 100. Ooh, damn. Damn, guys. Oh, uh, we got some migrants, so that's good. I'll make some more bedrooms. Oh, we got our first strange mood. Uh, we gotta go make a... We gotta make a, uh, metal smith's forge. So basically, um, whenever a dwarf, let me, exp I'll, I'll explain for strange moods and then we'll end the episode. Basically, a strange mood is whenever you've dug a certain number of uh, tiles, it builds up an internal hidden counter that slowly uh, causes one, one dwarf to go into a strange mood. The strange mood uh, can be many different kinds, morose, fey, creative, possessed, and depending on what they are, is what your dudes will need. So he needs a forest, shining bars of metal, he just needs wood and, and bars of metal, okay. So what we're going to do, is we are going to try to very quickly build a forge. Workshops, furnaces smelter. We basically just don't want him to... If you do not get him the stuff fast enough, he will go insane and you will lose a skill worker, which is not what you want. So what we're going to try to do is we'll pick some whatever the highest level of mineral is we have. We have some limonite. That'll give us iron. We basically just have iron. Let's look at silver. It might just give us copper. It's okay, we need to just start. The coal is something that uh, you need to process. Since we didn't start out with any uh, coke, the material, not the drug, uh, we have to make some charcoal, and then we can use that to make some lignite uh, or bitumous coal into coke. It'll take a second. Okay, and then go here. Did that work? Let's just do... Ooh, we got platinum. Fuck it, we're doing platinum. Platinum. And then we'll do a bit of this coal. So every one ore, once like one platinum ore, will make four bars. And so like, hopefully this will cover his needs for ore. And we'll know because he will dash out and go grab what he needs. So let's see what he does. Yep. 
hopefully he makes so basically uh, strange moods are cool because they can make any item so like anything that can be made as a weaponsmith he will or anything that can be made of made a metalsmith's forge he can make and it'll be something using platinum bars and ginkgo wood so who knows uh, hopefully it's a platinum hammer because that is the best weapon in the game because it's platinum's the densest metal and hammers work on a principle of density so could be something just terrible though could be a platinum blowgun or something we'll give him a minute let's go back down here shall we where did we get that platinum from Generally, if you find one platinum, you found a lot. Rock crystals, that's good. Platinum spear. That's going to be awesome. So, platinum spear. I'll have to look up how good that is. It won't be as good as steel, but it'll be worth a whole hell of a lot. Made of silver. I basically got no reason not to dig out these areas. Well, I think we're going to end it there for this one. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time, okay?